contrary to common belief, then the re racing isn't the cauldron of uh, bitterness and um, nastiness that we all assume it is compared to other industries. But there are some unique challenges to try to promote it, especially now, especially going forward. Yeah. What, what have you found has been the most challenging aspect of it? It's, I mean, I've been t t two, not, two years and a bit. It, I mean, when I arrived, I knew it was going in a direction. I mean, you'd be an idiot not to. I think a lot of people buried their head in the sand and thought, oh, there's so much tax generated, it'll be all right, and this and that. It's going in one way. And, um, and frankly, the, the, big, the big bookmakers have been doing the same thing for a long time, and they've been, getting, they've been tuning that skill. Technology supercharged the gambling sports book industry and the casino industry, and let's not beat around the bush. The big boys, half their business is casino. My, my business is, is horse racing fundamentally. So it's, um, it's the compliance, 26 million people have downloaded an app and played once or twice a year. That is a very large proportion of the, it's silly, the numbers are silly and that's through the technology and the unrelenting marketing of the bookmaking industry. So if, if the compliance legislation um, is coming down on bookmakers, there's only one person to blame. And it's not problem gamblers, it's bookmakers. And unfortunately, if your business model means you have to have two million active players, there's going to be collateral damage on the edge of that. There's just nothing you can do about it. You're, you're a victim of your own success. It's the same tobacco, you know, there was a tipping point for tobacco. There was a tipping point for cheap alcohol. There will be a tipping point for fatty foods online pornography I mean, not that i'm classing betting with any of these things there's when you become that successful you know they were saying like some countries you know if you open a bar in another country as soon as you get to the million pound mark someone's going to come and take a piece of your pie you know whether it be the local council or another owner of a bar it's a funny analogy but it's always going to be the case and with the gambling act is it's a it's a, it's going to be reviewed it's probably it's a it's a it's a manifesto pledge. It's going to happen. Let's be realistic about it. I think the BCG and the big boys have already started saying about advertising and some stuff about like slot machines and stuff like that. So they're, they're, they're front footing it, but it's going to be painful. And I spoke to someone really senior and he said bookmakers will be made to eat, insert a, a less polite word for excrement there. And he said they will, and that is what's going to happen. Now, I hope independents, like the small band of independents that you know, and on-course bookmakers, aren't swept up in this legislation and broken under the pressure of whether it be compliance or um, legislation. The benefit for the smaller players is that we don't spend 25% of our GGR on marketing. <laughs> so when that gets slashed, but bookmakers will find a new way to communicate with people. Cigarette companies created, you know, I cigarettes as a new way to communicate to people and they did direct marketing instead of advertising, you know, and John Player special Formula One teams became, I don't know, Marlborough doing mail shots. I don't know. But um, so we've got to pivot as an industry. It would be horrendous if um, betting became just this anodyne national lottery-esque small wagering bullshit boredom because it's a part of our national heritage it's not only part of our national heritage it's intrinsic to horse racing intrinsic it's what powers the fun in horse racing i think and the sport was fundamentally created for betting and there is no better sport on the planet to bet on i was at a conference i don't stop talking you've noticed i was at a conference and this fantastic guy at gbc said um he said, oh, you know, we're looking to India. Kabaddi's going to be the new thing. And I said, don't hold your breath, which I thought was very funny. But let's be honest, Kabad you know, football's a two-horse race. So you've had, to, you've, had to, you've had to turbocharge it with ackers and in-play and throw-ins and the trainer's going to blow his nose. Not trainer, the coach. Racing, bloody eight animals with jockeys on, running on the most picturesque places in the world, priced up off the top of someone's head, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's magic. And so we need to protect it. And so I'll be lobbying, and I hope other bookmakers will be lobbying hard to protect the core elements of bookmaking whilst protecting the people that play it. The onus is on us now to protect people. I'd love to push it onto banks and government and GamStop and the Gambling Commission. The onus is on us to protect people. And my view, getting political, Simon, is that you simply cannot protect five million people. You can protect a couple of thousand, 
dare I, dare I dream five to 10,000 people I can look after, but I can't look after millions of people. And that's the challenge, those, the, the amalgamation of these bookmakers. Their technology can keep up with selling you the product. It can't keep up with protecting you from issues that might be there. Okay, you've been quite modest up to now because you actually turned the business around, haven't you, since you come in? No, 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 no. It's, it was heading in the, it was hopefully heading in the right direction. <laughs> but, the, but the casino side of it, you've, you've sort of made up market. Yeah, well, we were very anti, well, we didn't want, um, I'm going to be right honest because this is a, a platform for punters and people, we weren't keen on slot machines. We thought they were, uh, um, we, we, were th we thought that they were a, uh, I hate to say it, but like a fob in your pocket. Um, so we've been very, uh, we've been really, we added slots because our third party provider said we had to, in a sense, um, because it's, if you want to play in the market and the engage, so the engagement, oh, sorry, the playing on slots has been tiny. Our players love live games direct from Latvia or Estonia and um, they've, they've absolutely relished live games, particularly you know, exactly back Jack and the games you'd expect in casino games. So we have grown that part of the business because we have a tech platform. Um, but our core business by far is UK and Irish horse racing. Okay, now you've, you've been, you're quite, uh, you've got your own sort of niche when it comes to advertising and ideas. You've, you're big on um, hospitality, that sort of thing. Do, do, you, do you have like a team that comes up with a brain, after a brainstorming session or do you wake up screaming Eureka and I've, you've thought of doing... It's a bit, it's a, it, do you know what, it's a bit, some, I'm a bit, because I come from marketing background, I tend to have an idea and I ram it down their throats. But um, we're doing some TV stuff later in the year, and that was all out of lockdown. Um, I went for the bit my only run of my life. <laughs> I had about nine ideas. I should do it more often. Uh, but, um, but no, we've got a really good team, and our, um, our marketing content team are great because they're constantly, you know, uh, they, you know we've got, they're now on the phone daily to John Motson, Jeffrey Boycott, Stuart Barnes, we just signed for rugby, which is fantastic. Cornelius Lysett, um, George Ellick we use from Five Live, Nat Coombs from Channel 4's American Football Show and Channel 5. And so we, our content team now talk to these people all the time, very similar to your business than this, and, and we just always trying to drive ideas off that. But fundamentally, all the best ideas have come from our broking team, which is the core of our business, because they are punters, if you will, and they know they come from that, they come from that world, and they're looking at the other products, and what can we do to be better? I mean, and talking about being better, you've branded yourselves really upmarket. I mean, if you open an account with Fitzdale's, last time I looked, you got money off a suit made in Savile Row. Which, yeah. Which is obviously you're, you're marketing uh, at a certain person. You're a well-dressed so, man, Simon. <laughs> it's, um, uh, yeah, well, let's, yeah. We're, on a show, we're not, I think before we were a kind of closed door members club, like uh, by invitation only. The door is definitely opened. Um, we can't, you can't, I mean, that says us sitting in a members club that we founded, but um, I don't, we're not snooty. And if you come to one of our events, it's, it's a, a cross section of punters and all that with one thing, which is they love sport. And so I think we got away from being too closed up and we've just opened the church a little bit more to, to people that want to have fun. But it's, it, it, honestly, it's uh, the customer we ask for is a person who digs customer experience. If they love being looked after on the phone or an app that gets them to horse racing in three clicks in the UK or they want to watch racing on our app or, or call the office or live chat the office and have a blab with the guys at the phones, we're there for them. And the added extension of that has always been our events, which are really good. And, and we were discussing earlier, we, we're over the day of just piling everyone to Cheltenham, piling them into a sweaty box, hoping they have a nice day. Um, for us now, it's come to the Fitzdale's Club and watch the arc from a table. Have we've got a French chef doing an amazing oysters, champagne, and f steak and chips, and watching the racing in Paris because you can't go. So what? What? How can we make sport experience better? And I won't. And this is definitely not a dig at arena or jockey club who work very hard. And and I love the independent race course in the UK, but most entertaining around sport is bang average in my opinion. I mean, absolutely, if you want a pint and a pie, that's great. But if you want that elevated experience, most of it's pretty average. And I think that's what we've, our marketing has been about, how can we make sport more? And it's not about claret and oysters. It's about just that whole experience is funner and more entertaining. So you can actually focus on the racing or the football. Okay, but, but being realistic, we also know <laughs> that certain elements 
could come along and ruin that day for it. So are you a bit like Royal Ascot? You still managed to keep the, in inverted commas, riffraff out? No, uh, what do you mean? Are we fussy about our clientele? Well, would you want, you wouldn't want any group of lads to get drunk on uh, champagne and start singing Here We Go after well, the third race? I mean, I've seen, I mean, as long as, it's, <laughs> as long as you're having a good day. We've never had a, pro uh, to be fair, our, our members are pretty um, well behaved at events. And it's wonderful, unless they, unless they have a winner, and unless they're an owner and they have a winner, and then that can go a bit wild. But I think we, we're, we're bookies, you know? We like a bit, we like it a bit wild, or we wouldn't be doing this job. Um, but yeah, no, we're not, we're not snooty. We just like good wine. <laughs>